So we're in Acts chapter 16. And it's a really interesting, I find it extremely interesting because, you know, when I, when I, I, when I look at Scripture, it's really easy to look at it doctrinally. It's easy to look at it theologically. You know, I'm a grad, seminary graduate. I've, I've got the, the, the degrees, the diplomas, and, and all those years that I, I, you know, I went to school. And, and one thing that, that I didn't learn in, in all of that education but I've learned through almost 30 years of being in the ministry, is that God is your God. He's not just the God of the Bible. When we want to meet God and we want to see exactly who God is, what he believes, what he thinks, then we go here. But God is a personal God. Jesus is my personal Lord and my personal Savior. And if you're a believer, he is your personal Lord and your personal Savior. And so that, that changes the whole dynamic between God and man. We will always be a, his creation. We will always be subservient to God because he's God and we're not. And yet God made it possible for us to relate to him as his children. I'm a dad. I've got a, I've got a son. And... There's a place in my heart for my son that will never change. No matter what he does, no matter the choices he makes, I will always love my son because he's my son. I believe God feels the same way about us. His, he never changes. His will, his ways, they never change. His, his love, his justice, his mercy, his discipline, it never changes, but he never stops loving his children. Okay, we need to remember that. One thing when I, when, when I look at scripture, I love the story because God is woven throughout scripture. It's God's history. It's God's working with humanity. It's working, him working with hu, um, individual human beings, fulfilling his, his perfect plan from Genesis 1-1 to the very last verse in Revelation. And, and it's, it's God's story of redemption for us, for mankind. But one thing I fear as an old Christian is that I forget how, how personal God desires to be with us. Paul is a perfect example. And that's why we're going through Paul's second missionary journey. And his intent was to go back to all the churches that he had planted before. And so he, he gathers his group. We, we discover that there's a, a, a fight between Paul and Barnabas. And if you know who Barnabas is, Barnabas is probably one of the nicest, kindest, gentle people in all of Scripture. And Paul, it says, contends with Barnabas. And so they go their separate ways, Barnabas with John Mark, Paul with, with Silas, and ultimately he's going to, he picked up Luke last week. And so he's got his personal doctor. And yet there was this, this, this contention, there was this fight, there was this, this, this squabble, whatever we want to term it. And, and every time I read that, it's like, I'm so glad Luke put that in there, because here's what we think. A lot of people think life is just a bowl of cherries or a bowl of ice cream or, or pizza. It's always good. There's never anything bad. We should never have any conflict. We should never say the wrong thing, think the wrong thing, or, or believe the wrong thing. But that's not humanity. And see, God came, Jesus came to save humanity, but he doesn't make us robots, he saves us out of our, our condemnation. We will not go to hell. We will go and be with him in heaven. But he left us on this planet for the purpose of being his ambassador and his representative to everyone we come in contact with. But here's the problem again. We try to pretend like life doesn't happen. A kid goes astray. Our, you know, our finances are in the toilet. We, 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 you know, we have a death or we have finance, whatever. We have finance. We've, we, we've got issues, but we can't let anybody know we got issues because, well, that's just not the thing to do. And let me just tell you, be really frank, that's contrary to Scripture. Okay? So when we lie to ourselves and we lie to others, God calls that sin. So we're part of the body of Christ we are, we are the bride of Christ. We are the children of God, the, the men and women, the sons and daughters of God. And he expects us to behave like we're his. 
And so part of that is being completely honest with ourselves, but also being as honest as we can be with each other because we're family. We're the family of God. And it's tough. I get it. As a pastor, it's really tough. I've known some of you guys for 30 years, and you know, I'm not afraid to say I messed up. I blew it. I sped. I almost got a ticket. I didn't today or yesterday, but you all know me. It's like we're taking the van tomorrow to rifle. You don't want me driving. <laughs> Serious. I drive by myself most of the time. I don't care how fast I take a corner as long as it's within reasonable limits of the speed. But so you don't want me driving a 15 pass. And you guys go, whoa, Ray, what's stop? Because it's like, no, I'm going, woo. Some of us might think, well, that's great. She's just paving the way before us. You know, when we get there, we'll have a built-in audience. But Paul looks at her and it says, he, he's greatly annoyed. And let me just, I wrote down what, what that literally means. It means to be thoroughly worn out with annoyance. Have you ever been there? When you just get so annoyed, you get so perturbed, you get so upset, that finally you just go, speak to the hand. Or, or worse, shut up and sit down. Or whatever. We would never do that because we're, we just don't. But Paul, Paul got greatly annoyed, and he did the only thing that he can do. And I'll tell you that in a minute. You already know. But let's look at Paul for a second. Here's Paul. He's going to teach and preach and tell everyone the good news of the gospel, that Jesus saves, that, that he, he's come from God. He's the only son of God. He died for the sin of the world. He arose from the grave. He ascended into heaven, and he is almighty God. He's the Messiah. He's the one that Israel always looked for but they didn't see him. And he's got this, this girl who, who, who's, who's testifying that he is who he is, so there's no denying that what she was saying was true, but it so annoyed Paul that he literally cast the demon out of her. It's an, you, you, you won't read this in your Bibles because the, our scripture is translated a lot of times. Literally, some of the word-for-word the -word translations tell us that it was the serpent of Epiphany. It means nothing to us, right? It's okay. Pith, a, a python. It was a serpent demon, is what they think, because that word pithany is actually in the original text. But in ours, we, it means nothing to us. But in Philippi, there was actually a temple to this demon god, whatever, small g, of course. And so he was confronting a, a very common religion at that point. And so he, he, he cast the demon out of the girl. Does that make sense? He, but he had to do it in the name of Jesus. Right? He didn't have the power to do it himself. Only Jesus has that power. But it was a very specific getting rid of, if you will, and it'll, it'll make sense here in, in a little bit. So he cast the demon out of this girl, and all of a sudden, his greatly being annoyed comes back to bite him, to haunt him, if you will. Probably not a good word. But all of a sudden, this girl is free from her do it foresight. okay she, she, foresight what else say it possession. possession okay she's free from she's free from all the things that bound her as long as she was bound to that demon and where we're not this this is this is just basically and a, a lot i know but all of a sudden, this girl was free. There was freedom that she had not experienced for, for however long she'd been possessed. And that caused a problem because if we go back to verse 16, the end of verse 16, she was bringing her master's prophet by fortune telling. Do you know what the, the spirit of divination is? You know what divination is? It's, 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 it's not telling the future because that's just not possible. Demons aren't gods. But it is, it is literally, literally this. It's a person who can tell people things about their lives that they don't know. 
So that's what this girl was doing. That's what they were selling. She would look and, and she would have the insight because she was demon-possessed to be able to tell someone of something that might happen in the future or perceive. And so she was making lots of money for these guys. And all of a sudden, with one sentence, Paul frees this girl. Would you say hallelujah to that? Would you? I would. Praise God, she's free. She no longer has to do the bidding of her masters. She no longer has to be possessed. And I don't think any of us truly know what that means, what it feels like. But to be, to be free from a demonic presence in her life and, and, and all, all, the, all the good that happens there. But there's always consequences to everything that we do. Right? So Paul cast out the demon. The girl was free from the demon. Angels probably rejoiced. Everybody that was with me said, yeah, Paul, way, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, something else happens. And here's what happens next. Verse 19, but when her masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. And when they had brought them to the chief magistrates, they said, these men are throwing our city into confusion, being Jews. And are proclaiming customs which it is not lawful for us to accept or to observe, being Romans. All of a sudden, Paul and Silas and his group find themselves to be the enemy. They came simply to tell the good news of who Jesus was. And Paul got greatly annoyed. God honored that. The demon was cast out, but it irritated, greatly annoyed the people that owned her. And all of a sudden, Paul and Silas find themselves in hot water. Why? Was it because Paul was greatly annoyed? Was it because these people were angry? Was it because God didn't really care what, what Paul did? Flip over to Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Because this is, uh, this is uh, the mindset that we have to keep in context. And we probably all know this verse. But God gives his kids the freedom to be greatly annoyed. He gives his kids the freedom to, to be upset, to be joyful, to be happy. But there's always going to be something that comes next. There's always going to be a consequence, a good, bad, or, or another. There's always going to be something because this is a journey. This is a walk. And so in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, we probably know this. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. God can use every situation, every circumstance for his good. He allows us the freedom to fall, to stand, to tiptoe, to go backwards, to go forwards. But he, he never says that there won't be consequences for what you do. It's the why you do what you do that matters. Because see, if Paul was just greatly annoyed because he didn't get enough sleep... And he just got sick and tired of this, this girl. And what she was saying, we might not be reading this. But see, God, God took what Paul did and the consequences of, of obeying God and following God, because we know Paul was following God. He was on mission with God. The consequences for Paul doing what Paul knew he could do and should do was that he got in trouble with the law. He was going to be put in jail. We'll see that in a couple weeks. That his life, for, for this moment in time, was going to be very convoluted. People were going to be very upset with him, and he was going to be the enemy to the people that he was trying to minister to. But God works all things together for good. So there's always going to be consequences. But here's what, what we know, and here's what Paul knows, is that when you're faithful to God... We get what we get because God's faithful. 
Because God wants us to walk faithfully. He wants us to use the gifts that he's given us. He, he wants us to worship him, to praise him, to tell others about him. But he does not want us to live lies. He does not want us to, 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 to have facades and, 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 and pretend that, that, that life isn't life. And that we don't get irritated, that we don't get upset, that we don't get hurt, that we don't cry. That we are real people in love with God who he is protecting and walking with and leading us on the journey that he's put before us. See, that's what Paul is, is showing us here, I believe. It's that no matter what we do, God is faithful. We don't have time to go into the, to the consequence, to the, Philipp, to the Philippian jailer and all that stuff. But God is going to use this very specific moment in time to, to change a group of people's lives and their eternities forever. But Paul didn't know that when he was faithful in casting out the demon. He was just being faithful, doing what he could do and what he was led to do at that moment. So here's what I kind of want to ask us is, uh, are we willing to be faithful? And are we faithful when we might get in trouble? Are we willing to be faithful and just follow God no matter what the course is, knowing that we have to follow him according to his word and to, according to his way and according to his will? But are we willing to say the hard truths in love, born out of a relationship with Christ, or are we, are we willing to be silent when he wants us to be silent? I'm a talker. I, God's call for me is Ray, shut up. Ray, just, shh, just, just. It's kind of like that salesman sometimes. You're in, you're in Best Buy or whatever. It's one of the stores, and they, they just follow you around, and oh, 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 yes, and oh, yeah, yeah, and they, you know, aisle after aisle, and finally it's like, go away. Greatly annoyed. It's like, you know, and God just says, he says to me, Sometimes we just have to let life, let God, let life happen to us and just be quiet and roll with the punches. There are other times when he says, shout it to the rooftops. Paul shouting, and, and if, if you look when he cast out the demon, there are, there's an exclamation point. And, and in, in the original text, there are no periods and all that stuff. But they look, at the, those being the scholars, the translators, they look and it's emphatic. He's like, come out of her. I mean, just, I mean, very forceful, very, very in control but very emphatic, leave. Very sure of what he needed to do. But even with that, there were consequences. You know he's going to be beaten? Do you know that? How many of you up for a good beating? Anybody? Roy and I stayed with my grandparents, so I think it was our junior, senior year of high school, and, and I loved my grandmother to death. She was, she was about this tall, might have weighed 85 pounds, but boy, she was a fireball. And uh, she, she never took any lip from anybody. Our grandfather was probably about this tall and about this wide, and he was the most humble man you'll ever know, and, and he would irritate her. I don't know how because he never said anything wrong. He was, it was always her fault, and she would never admit it, but, but, but she... She, she was the person that you just simply didn't cross because she had these, these paddles and, 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 and just a, a way of threatening that would make you shake in your boots. And she's this tall, this wide. She had a broken finger, and so her finger was always out like this, and she pointed at you, and you knew the moment she pointed at you, Dan, you're in trouble. Right, Roy? Roy's back there. He's my twin brother. He's, he's nodding. And so you knew 
do not anger grandma. Right? But you know what? It always happened. Roy always did something wrong and irritated <laughs> But there's consequences. There's always consequences. Whether it's God, whether it's grandma, whether it's spouse, whether it's work, there's always going to be consequences for what we choose to do. No matter how honorable, noble, righteous it might be, bad things happen to good people, right? And so Paul and, Barn Paul and Silas and Luke and all of his group, we're going to learn a real tough lesson the people are people. People can be honoring. That the discipline that comes, though it might not be deserved, can still be God honoring. That the pain, the inner turmoil, the relational turmoil, all of that can be a blessing to God. But it's about how we do what we do. Have you ever had to push a relationship aside because of the, the conflict it, it brought up? Let me just, okay. Some of you know, some of you know this. There was a, a, a time in my life when, when we were with, with some people, and I did not like the person that I was when I was around those people. Does that make sense? I, I just didn't, I didn't like me. And it's like, wow, you know, what's, what's happening? And my only recourse was, was to separate myself from those people. And there was, there was certainly some reasons, but it's like, well, hold it. I, something isn't right. Something's out of whack. Something, something's not level, not, not stable. And so I, I literally prayed to God. I said, God, what's going on with me? God, I don't feel, and I don't live by emotion, but God, I don't feel right. I don't like the way I'm thinking. I don't, I don't, I don't like even my behavior. And, and all I knew of, because I was seeking God, was you need to separate yourself from that situation. You know how hard that was? Have you ever been there where God has just said, man, you need to leave those people alone? You need to get away from them? It was so freeing. But boy, I tell you what, it hurts so bad. But God works all things together for good for those who love God and live according to his purpose. See, that's what Paul got. Well, Paul would actually write that in Romans. He would endure the, what he's going to endure. He's going to get over his being greatly annoyed with 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 Barnabas and with the, this girl, and, and life is going to continue to go on. He's going to continue to be faithful. He's going to continue to walk with God. And every time he wakes up in the morning, there's always that tendency or that opportunity, if you will, for conflict. There's always that opportunity for pain. There's always that opportunity for rejoicing and for joy. But the key is, and this is what we learned from Paul, is when we walk with God, when it's all said and done, it doesn't matter. Because the pain goes away. And if it doesn't, we die and we go and be with him. Nobody, some of you are smiling. That's our reality. Is that This is not going to be the be-all to end-all. This is the proving, the, tra the training ground. And, and it, 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 at the end of it all, this isn't our reality. He said, there's a place I've prepared for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and bring you to myself. It's my paraphrase. He said, don't get so comfortable here. This is a rough world, but you can have joy in this world. Do you know, I, I, I never doubt that Paul was a joyous person. Because that's just part of life, isn't it? Happy, sad, joyful, uh, melancholy. But isn't that just life? 
How many of you are happy all the time? What? How many of you are sad all the time? Charlie, I know that's not true. <laughs> and why? Because... Life has its ups and downs. Today we saw that Paul, <laughs> and again, I appreciate this of God. He put it in his word. The apostle Paul got angry. He got annoyed. And he did something that he probably wouldn't regret. But he got annoyed enough that there's exclamation points and quotes. And he cast a demon out of a girl. And he would have consequences to pay. So I want to leave you with this. Why did it matter? Why did it matter that the demon girl was shouting and proclaiming the good news? Well, remember I told you about Python and all that stuff? Paul didn't need someone to go for him. Paul didn't need a demon-possessed girl to go before him and, and prime the pump, so to speak. He did, probably didn't want to be associated and to be thought that he actually was hanging out with a demon-possessed girl. Does that make sense? He didn't need that kind of news. But also, there was a girl that was involved. How long had she been possessed? What was her story? Well, we certainly don't know. And so Paul did what Paul could do Let the consequences come. I believe that's how we have to live our lives. Be faithful to what God has revealed to us. Be faithful to what God has shown us. Don't let fear overwhelm us. Don't let anger overwhelm us. See, because if Paul was truly angry, he would not have said, in the name of Jesus Christ... Come out. I think he would have said, get out of her. But he did the right thing at the right time in the right way. That's what's expected of us, to do the right thing the right way at the right time. We're not always going to be happy with the outcome. But there are times when we're going to go, And there's going to be other times who go, oh, God. <laughs> because he says, every day is brand new. We sang it. Lord, I thank you for the morning. Lord, I thank you. Right? So we get to get up every single morning and say, God, what have you got for me? Or when you God, what have you got for me today? <laughs> we get to choose. So did Paul. And he chose to follow God even if it sent him to jail. All we got to do is follow him to be faithful. And he says, come on, just follow me. Just follow me. That's how he called us, Jesus called his disciples. He didn't say, okay, well, I want to see your resume. You know, oh, here's, here's my statue. He said, follow, come on. He's walking down the seashore and he goes, Peter, come on, follow me. Follow me. Well, hold it. No, no, just come on. Just follow me. That's what he says today. And that has not changed at all. So I'm going to ask you to stand. Evelyn, if you'll come to the piano. And here's the, here's the, the call. Follow him. And if he's impressed something upon you, if he's placed someone in your life and you're being chicken, you're, you're allowing fear to, to overwhelm you, and you know you need to, to, to go talk to someone, to, to share with someone, to, to give somebody something, to, to come confess, repent of something, we got to do it. What better time than now? Evelyn, start playing if you will. We're going to sing Just As I Am. Most of you probably know this. We don't even need the words. The words will be on the screen. But I just ask if you'll just quiet your heart this morning. Quiet your mind and say, and very clearly say, Lord, I just want to be faithful this morning. I want what you want for me. Help me to truly want it. And God, I will be as faithful 
as I can. That's all he asks. Let me pray for us real quick. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for our time. Lord, I thank you for the example that you give in Scripture. Lord, how you led Paul, how he spoke, how he would suffer the consequences and do it with joy. God, I pray that we would see the example. And Father, we simply would just follow you. That we'd submit our lives to you. We would submit our, our woes, our cares, our loves, our joys. Every bit of us that we just submitted to you this morning. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you.